Welcome to our new episode um, with um, Manuel Jimenez Garcia and his company Nagami, which is an innovative company in 3D printing, specifically uh, for furniture. But I let you listen to uh, Manuel himself. And I want to welcome you to our uh, impact design uh, episode. And we had the chance to talk before. I was really excited about what you do in the 3D printing space. and. Um, how it's innovative and also your background as an architect, specifically having studied in London. And so uh, let's, uh, you know, can, can you give just a bit of a background, you know, how you started and what Nagami is? Sure. Uh, thank you first, Yasmin, for the, the invitation. And uh, I think it would be best if I just uh, share my screen. So I go through a few slides and um, just very briefly, um, talk uh, while they're running. Um, so Nagami yeah, is a, it's a, a technology-based design company uh, that is aiming to uh, rethink a, a product design uh, through sustainable technology, right? So um, we uh, created our own 3D printing methods, basically scaling up um, the, the most commonly used uh, uh, 3D, 3D printing or 3, 3D printers, uh, right? That, that, that have um, limitations on, on scale, uh, durability, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so we uh, started the research on making a robust uh, process uh, to 3D print at a much larger scale, um, starting first with the scale of, uh, of furniture. Um, so we use uh, industrial robots um, uh, that are then um, uh, moving and, and positioning uh, our, the extruder that we developed um, so that we, we melt uh, plastic and then and pour it in a layer by layer fashion. And, uh, and we've worked with um, uh, some very highly recognized um, uh, designers and architects such as uh, Ross Lovegrove, uh, Patrick Sumarker from Zaha Hadid, architects and, and so on. Um, so I'll, I'll show a little bit of the, this is the, the, the aim of the, of the company. Uh, so as, as we all know, um, product manufacturing and uh, not only limited to furniture, um, is, a, is a very long and wasteful production chain. So you require a series of machinery uh, co connected in a production uh, line that sometimes uh, is actually very, very um, uh, wasteful and not sustainable. And it requires a high investment uh, to um, make these products, right? So to produce molds and so on. And there's a high level of uh, standardization uh, as a result of that. Um, so what we try to do in, in Nagami is to, to sift this process or, or uh, better say to compact it um, so that we have a very, very short uh, production chain um, where we go uh, really just from uh, the, the design in the, um, in the digital realm, in the computer, uh, to the machine, and that machine can produce a different product every time. So it allows for a level of customization. So it's, it's essentially uh, the, the contrapoint to Henry Ford's um, assembly line, uh, where you have many machines to produce a single product. Uh, we have only one machine uh with uh, uh, that allows for infinite variation of uh that product what is the most unique uh you know feature about um your 3d printing because there are other 3d printing companies already existing what would you say and and then maybe by the examples you're showing us yeah i think i mean we'll have a few a few uh features uh that are particular about nagami uh we actually started with the uh, air printing which is what you see in the screen that's what when we were really in a garage uh, for this piece for the for the Pompidou. Um, so we started for the um, probably the most difficult one that is uh, printing material in the air, right? Um, but but then um, the, the probably the, the um, uh, most important milestone for us um, was to manage to print at the quality um, that a finished product deserves and uh, to print very fast, right? So some of the chairs that we're doing uh, print uh, in three to, to four hours, and um, and uh, we can also um, so so that that way basically um, we we can put the real product in the market, right? Uh, so we we make uh, uh, the process very efficient, 
um, so that the, the price tag can be low and, uh, and open up a real market for 3D printing products. That's for me the most, the most key uh, factor. Um, and that's uh, what we, we try to emphasize in our production line, which is what you, what you see here. Um, so that we, we can print uh, pieces very, very quickly. But at the same time, uh, some of the features that we can achieve through this technique are unachievable uh, with traditional manufacturing methods. So for example, color graduation, uh, gradations, um, opacity gradations, right? That, that uh, we achieve by mixing uh, the, uh, pig the pigments gradually in, in, in the extruder. And, and also create geometries that uh, you couldn't create in any other context. Uh, like for example, um, um, surfaces that fall inwards that would be impossible to, to demold, right? So we have a much greater uh, formal freedom than in um, other, other kind of processes. What is the amazing sustainability factor which impressed me when we talked about it and how you're using uh, even, you know, bottles, uh, plastic bottles from the ocean, but uh, also considering when we talked about not the ones that are toxic because you know, there's a lot of toxic plastic, but how are you reusing them? And that's, uh, I think, an amazing factor uh, being part of your philosophy. So if you can explain that, I would appreciate. Yeah, so um, sustainability is, uh, is, is kind of at the core of our, of our research and, and our products, right? So um, we work with what we call an uh, unfortunately unlimited material. Plastic, uh, most plastic will be with us forever. And uh, we, we all know what's the, uh, what the current situation looks like. Uh, what is surprising is that actually less than 10% of the plastic we create is actually recycled. Um, so we, we have a partnership with the Parley for the Oceans, uh, which is an environmental uh, organization. And then, so they, they create campaigns to uh, collect uh, plastic uh, from the coastlines and, and then uh, treat it so that it becomes a material that we can print with. And uh, that's, for example, what we use for the uh, face seals uh, project. So uh, we were uh, printing PPE uh, for donations for uh, hospitals during um, the, the worst time of COVID or the first uh, couple of months of COVID. Uh, and those were created with a, a recycled plastic from, from the ocean. In a, in a um, kind of higher end um, uh, products or in, a, in different kind of events. Like this is one we, we just uh, uh, finished for uh, the British Fashion Council, uh, which is the, the British uh, Fashion Awards uh, 2020 uh, trophy, uh, which is again uh, printed uh, with the, uh, the uh, Parley Ocean plastic. Um, so we're we're kind of uh, very conscious about the, um, about that, and uh, and we're actually indeed aligning most of our efforts uh, towards improving uh, that system uh, to connect better uh, recycling and, and printing. And we're actually initiating um, a research project with the Parley for the Oceans um, to uh, streamline that process. Um, so basically, we can uh, print on site with material that is uh, uh, collected and classified on site uh, as well and, and recycled, right? Yes. Uh, so that, that's how we are steering uh, our company. And uh, we, we output uh, beautiful products uh, as, a, as a way to achieve that larger goal, uh, which is definitely uh, linked to sustainability. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's uh, aligned with our philosophy. So we're also very excited to be uh, discussing a furniture line that I've showed you. We are working on for the hospitality sector, which is totally uh, designed from either, uh, you know, uh, organic materials or recycled uh, materials. Uh, so 100% sustainable. So what would be uh, just to, you know, to understand, to explain in a few words, the process to be from us as architects designers, because we uh, we are designing these furniture for the hospitality and we are going to um, manufacture them with you, the ones that are, uh, you know, adaptable to 3D printing. How would you describe just in a few words the process from our drawing board to, to you to get it uh, realized? Uh, yeah, I think, well, probably th this, is, this is kind of our, our workflow, but um, essentially 
um, what we what we do is uh, to streamline that communication between uh, the digital the, the the digital version of the drawing board, right, uh, to uh, production. Um, so we work together with designers um, to uh, create a three-dimensional model uh, that is uh, printable, right? So it works with the constraints of a uh, non-supported uh, 3D printing. And, uh, and we also work with them on, uh, on advising uh, or creating a range of uh, uh, customization possibilities that they can achieve. Yes, then immediately we just prototype it. Yes, so, well, we are looking forward to work with you on our uh, collection, and uh, I think uh, it would be really interesting to see it, how it can, you know, not be only using sustainable materials, but the process of producing it is sustainable, and there are not so many companies around, unfortunately, today, because that is, a, you know, another challenge. So my last question, we have a few minutes left, is uh, what is the impact on design you want to have, you know, with, with all the work you're doing, because I can see you're very passionate as, as much as we are about the factor of creating beautiful uh, you know, products, but being very uh, aware and accountable for sustainability, not just you know, seeing it as an after effect or something nice to have, but with a very strong uh, conviction that this is what we have to do to preserve our planet. Uh, yeah, so I mean, my, I think our, our um, uh, final goal is to um, take this kind of process where we print not only furniture but also uh, architecture uh, to a highly distributed model. Um, so essentially, I mean, it's been very clear with, with COVID how distributed manufacturing uh, and 3D printing specifically made a huge effect in um, how we can produce. We can shift to a complete new product immediately in a matter of seconds um, so the face seals uh, respirator valves everything that was happening to support uh, health workers uh, was a, an overnight shift in production and uh, only 3d printing could do that and we could do it all over the world right like that that kind of project was extremely um, distributed so people were producing just very closely uh, to uh, the final customer which in this case was the hospital. Uh, our goal is to take that as, uh, to a much higher level, right? Uh, to produce not only material uh, that is needed to respond to a crisis, but to produce consumable, to co produce architecture, to be able uh, to respond to disaster scenarios on site, right? And then that's why we're trying to set up a series of uh, hubs distributed worldwide so we can uh, take the efficiency of, uh, of uh, 3D printing uh, to um, a much wider network. And, uh, and that's where our focus are at the moment. Yes, fantastic. I think this is a good ending. Thank you so much for the interview. Uh, I'm fascinated by all the different possibilities 3D printing, especially for the furniture at the moment is giving us. And uh, hopefully we will be able to have next year our collection out in collaboration with you. And I think it's, um, it's, it's going to give a lot of, uh, you know, uh, innovation uh, into the market of 3D printing and hopefully trigger ideas how it can be used more into the future. Thank you so much for being available. <clears throat> Sorry for the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and looking forward for the, uh, to the collaboration with you.